what are you willing to do in order to live the dream? Now, I'm going to use these words, these phrases kind of interchangeably. The dream. Everybody say, the dream. We're going to live the dream. Right? And, and we might use the word success interchangeably with the dream. Because if we are living the dream God has for us, which means we are fulfilling our purpose for being alive, wouldn't that be success? You know, success can't be measured with dollar signs. It can't be measured in material things. Though that is one way the world measures success. So please don't, don't try to pigeonhole this into some materialistic idea. What I want you to think about is fulfilling your purpose is the greatest success you could have. Now also I want you to understand as we work through these, these nuggets is that in order to do God's purpose for your life, it's going to require or out of necessity it will require some financial success, some spiritual success, which means maturity, having more than enough financially than just enough for you, your wife, your two kids, you four, no more. It's so that you have more than enough so that you can give, as we just put on the screen, to world missions. Missions, world missions, not just missions overseas, world missions. And so, uh, as we've been looking here for the last few days, especially coming up on our 29th church anniversary, uh, you know, we see a lot of the things we're doing. And how many of you have ever been so busy doing that you never really stop to really contemplate on what he's done and what he's doing and what he may be ready to do? So what are you willing to do in order to live the dream? Well, and the question, the follow-up question would always be, how bad do you want it? That's really important. Because you will only become what you are becoming right now. That means you're becoming something, someone right now. So what are you becoming? You're, that's up to you. Are you willing, here's the second question, are you willing to endure criticism from those who secretly, sometimes not even knowingly, envy your happiness, remember, interchangeably, or success, If y'all want to just grunt right there and say, yes. Okay. Are you willing to endure criticism from those who secretly or unknowingly envy your happiness, your success? Are you living the dream? And remember, when I'm talking about the dream, I'm not talking about a, a Ferrari. I'm not talking about a Mercedes. I'm not talking about a BW or a Chevrolet. I'm not talking about a three-bedroom house, a ten-bedroom house. I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about living God's divine purpose. Because nothing material, nothing in the world, nothing in religion will satisfy what you were created to become and therefore do. Nothing. Nothing. No matter what you attain, there will always be emptiness. Unless you're living the dream that God has for you. Don't you want to make dad happy? How many of you have dreams for your kids? Bigger dreams for your grandkids. Because you know money's no factor with the grandkids. Don't you want your kids to fulfill their dreams and plans and purposes. And wouldn't that make you happy? That's the way dad is. That's the way our father is. He has a plan, and he has a plan he's created us for. And it gives God pleasure when we fulfill the purpose he created us for. We ought to make dad smile, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we live to make him happy? All right. So are you willing to endure criticism those, uh, from those who secretly envy your happiness, your success? Are you willing to put up with it? A lot of people won't. Some may mistake your passion for arrogance, your humility as pride, your faith as foolishness. Press on to the prize of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. They're going to criticize you. You know when you got the promotion at the highway department, everybody wasn't as happy about it as you. Tough. I can't help, well I can, but I can't help that I live in the favor of God. When God is looking to hand out promotions, I can't help. He looks behind all the gifted people and finds me. What's he looking for? God's looking for availability. He's looking for willingness. 
And when you begin to allow God to truly bless you, and I'm not talking certainly in material ways. That's incidental. That materialism is really a result in some ways. It's God's way of confirming his covenants, what he says in Deuteronomy. Confirming the covenant. Are you willing to forget your failures? Now, this is for someone else. Are you willing to forget your failures? Now, when we say that, we don't mean forget them so you can mess around and do it again. You've got to learn from them. But forget your failures or to get over your failures and not allow anyone to use it against you, including you using it against you, to keep you from living the dream. Why is it the hardest thing for us to win family members is because they know our failures having lunch with our friends today he said everywhere I go I tell people about you and I tell them about your sale ministry <laughs> and how God uses you today and he said every time we drive by here and they take the Spring Hill Loop when they're visiting family in town he said we're just amazed at what God's doing I said no one's more amazed than I am Are you willing to forget your failures and not let anyone, including you, use them to keep you from living the dream? Most people give up whenever they're criticized. And I've said many, many times, you're going to be criticized. If you do nothing, they're going to say, you're a do-nothing. If you do a little bit, they're going to say, oh, you think you're better than everybody else. So you know what? If you're going to be criticized, let's give them something to talk about. Let's just go all out. 110%. I was 110% a sinner. You know, I just, I don't want to get too deep into this, but you know what? We love to walk into places and get donuts and freak a bunch of, bunch of stiff necks. Uh, will you shake our hair? We, we love to just make, just blow people's minds. I love being a Christian and blowing people's minds. I just wish I could shake my hair. <laughs> but why is it that when we get saved, all of a sudden we think we're in a POW camp? All of a sudden we're conscientious objectors. objectors. A lot of people aren't even conscientious objectors. They're unconscious objectors. The church lulls them to sleep. That's why scripture says in Ephesians 5, Awake thou that sleepest. It's one of my favorite scriptures when I'm preaching. Listen to this. Are you willing to forget your failures and not allow anyone, including yourself, including yourself, to keep you from living the dream, the plan and purpose God has for your life? Let's make Dad happy. Though you cannot go back and make a brand new start, my friend, anyone can start from now and make a brand new end. Paul said, this one thing I do, then he named a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Forgetting the things that lay behind, I press toward the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. That sounds like more than one thing, but it's not. That's all the same thing. Because if I'm pressing, I don't have time to remember. Come on, can I help anybody in here tonight? If I'm pressing against the obstacle, if I'm pressing against the pressure, if I'm focused on where I'm going, I cannot be focused on my past. And I've said it, and I'll say it again because some of you don't have long-term memory. When the devil reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. I'm going to heaven, he's going to hell. Everybody say that. Never mind. The heck with the devil, huh? Have you ever considered a Christian education for your child? Then you should check out Arkansas Christian Academy, Saline County's fully accredited premier Christian school at an affordable family rate. Students have opportunities to excel in academics, athletics, fine arts, and technology. And through our dual enrollment program, high school students can even achieve an associate's degree prior to graduation. Visit us at ArkansasChristianAcademy.org. Now, this is one of my favorite slogans, A New Day. I just love this. Let's read it together. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. But what I do today is important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, 
This day will be gone forever, leaving in its place something I have traded for it. I want it to be gain and not loss, good and not evil, success and not failure, in order that I shall not regret the price that I have paid for it. This is the beginning of a good day. Y'all did not help me hardly at all. Say, this is the beginning of a good day, a new day. My best days are right now. Now, I know some of you are over 40. And some of you think, well, I ain't worried about tomorrow. I ain't looking forward to a new day. I mean, after all, I'm over 50. Get over yourself, would you? What makes you think you're too old to keep pressing on? If you're still on the planet, it's because God hadn't got, got your place ready in heaven. That means he's got something for you to do down here. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Have you ever considered that God's thinking about you? How many times during the day, you're just going around about your day, your business, your job, you're you're doing whatever you're doing, relaxing, recreating, whatever you're doing. How, How often do you just stop and say, man, God is so good. Have you ever just stopped to think, man, God's thinking about me? You know, he never sleeps nor slumbers. He never takes a day off. You can go to the heights of heaven to the depths of hell. He is there. What a God. And he says, I know the thoughts I think. Oh, my God's thinking about me. You say, Pastor Fred, he's just not thinking about you. He's thinking about me. Everybody say, oh, thank you, Lord, for thinking about me. Or I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Now, that goes against a whole lot of doctrinal teaching, doesn't it? God's thinking about peace. To give you, oh, what kind of an end? To give you an expected end. Paul said, I've run my race, I've finished my course. Now there's laid up for me a crown in heaven. And not only for me, but for all those that watch for his coming. An expected end. God has this thought for us. He who's begun a good work in us will complete it until... I'm trying to get to the nuggets and I've got down into the breastbone here. Mm. This God thinks about us and he has an expected end for us. And he says, he that's begun a good work shall complete it. God's not going to leave you half-baked. Well, then again, God, you know, God's, God's working on you. God's still got you in a, in a process, in a prog. I got to keep going. To give you an expected end. The visions for an appointed time, though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come. Boy, Galatians talks to us about not becoming weary in well-doing. Don't give up. Don't give up. God's thinking about you. You say, yeah, but the devil's got all kinds of strategies. God's way ahead of him. Way ahead of him. For everything the devil's meant for your harm, God's already ahead of him. Going to turn it for your good. Turn it for his glory. I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach my... I, I may never get to the nuggets. We just need us some miracle whip up in this house. I'm ready to make me a sandwich. All right, I'm going to give you now, these are real quick. I don't know if I can do them quick, but these are supposed to be real quick. Seven, everybody say seven. seven. Irrevocable keys to live in the dream. Seven keys. How many keys are there? Can't just do it with one key. There's not, there's not just like the master key. These are keys. Keys for living. Keys for keep going. Keys for never giving up. Keys that know that God's got me on his mind. He's got an expected end. And if I'll just use the keys God gives me, I can get through every door that the devil has tried to close. Come on, somebody. Listen to this. Find, number one, find a mentor and discover their secrets. Find a mentor. mentor. There, there's got to be somebody that's already done something like what you're believing God to do. A friend of ours moved off to New Jersey, just moved back, called me on the phone and started asking me uh, questions about building a house. He said, what do I need to build a house? I said, patience, patience, patience. I said, what do I need to look, what do I need to expect? I said, well, the only obstacles you're going to have building this house is snow, Ice, sunshine, deer season, squirrel season, coon season, rabbit season, duck season, good weather, bad weather, 
whether or not they even show up. But I said, if you've got patience and you'll just keep pressing on, you can do this. <laughs> Find a mentor. Why did he call me? Because we started building homes in 1982, and we built homes, and we, of course, contracted everything here and at the ranch. Uh, God trained us and equipped us to do, to do that. Now, I don't want anybody calling me about building a house. I'm interested in building a kingdom. All right. Find a mentor, though. Find somebody. Listen, this is the key. Find somebody that's successful doing or having done what you are called to do. Find a mentor and discover their secrets of success. Say this with me. Faith without blisters is dead. And the blisters ought to be here, not here. Shouldn't be on your bottom. Should be right here. You ought to be putting your hand. He blesses everything you put your hand to. Well, I was thinking about it. That ain't going to get it done. You might think about it, pray about it, meditate on it, but you eventually got to get up and do it. Can I get a amen? Because that's only point one. Nugget one. This is a seven nugget package. Anybody need some dipping sauce? All right, number two. Measure. Periodically, measure your success by the progress you're making in the direction of God's purpose for your life. Here's what we have a tendency to do. Man, this is taking so long. All right, let me irritate you. God spoke to me very vividly in his way of talking to me in 1972 about helping hurting young people. 1972, 28, 47 years ago. We didn't buy the land for the ranch till the latter part of 99, broke ground in 2000, didn't open the ranch till December of 05. I I've lost count how many years that is, 72 to 2000. Is that 28 years? That's a long time. That's longer than it took Abraham and Sarah to have, have a son. Nobody wants to wait that long. So why did it take so long? Because God is preparing you for what he's prepared you for. And we're in such a hurry. Uh, we, we were shopping. We were shopping. Well, I was in the car. And anyway, we were shopping. We were getting some stuff at Walmart. And she normally gets a particular ban a pancake batter. And I looked, and she had Aunt Jemima. Y'all remember Aunt Jemima? What was the slogan? Aunt Jemima, what? What took you so long? Yeah. We usually use Bisquick. But now they come out with these big things of Bisquick and we're just, we don't need big quick. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it takes a while. Why? Because some of us take a little longer to learn. And during that many, almost three decades of preparing me just to get started, you know what God was doing? Working on me. Working on me, teaching me patience, endurance, tenacity. Teaching me how not to give up. He was teaching me how to trust him. None of that, hardly any of that was fun. Eight years out of Bible school, I'm still in the grocery business. Why? Because he's teaching me management. Why? Because he had something for me to do. You know what it was? To manage Agape Ministries for my pastor. Man, that wasn't easy. A lot of hard days there. Why did he do that? Because he knew I was going to have to come over here eventually. That's a long time. So God's, God's is always, God wastes no time. Make your, make, measure your success. In other words, don't look at how long it's taken, and I know that's hard, and don't look, because a lot of times it doesn't look like we're making a lot of progress. A lot of times it just, it just looks like it's so slow. I just feel like I'm just not hardly making any progress. But you know what? Even moving at this pace, if I keep moving at this pace, eventually I'm going to get over there. I read something the other day. It happens. That a turtle never gets in its lifetime more than a mile from where it was born. And that you should never get a turtle and move it. If you do, it's lost forever. Just, that was free. <laughs> but you know, even a turtle don't get anywhere till it sticks its neck out. You run over to a turtle, what's it do? Here, let's do it like this.
And they'll look out, look back, look out, snapping turtle, and that thing won't let go unless it thunders. Did y'all know that? That's what my daddy said. He wouldn't lie to you about a turtle. So don't measure, don't, don't think you're not making progress. Because even if you're not making progress physically on the outside to a destination, because success is not just the destination, it's the journey. But even if you just feel like you're doing in the army, this is called marking time. Just marking time. Even if it doesn't look like I'm going to the destination, you know what? He's working in here. He's working on me. Hi, Perry Black right here at Destin Wind TV, and I want to invite all of our Christian educators and administrators to join us July the 19th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for Stratagos Intruder Response Training. As you well aware, we are living in perilous times, and we must be prepared to protect our staff and students entrusted into our care. Information right there on your screen. Join us for this dynamic training seminar. Until then, God bless you. Success demands sacrifice, and it is demonstrated through discipline, preparation, and tenacity. You got them times you have to just bite down, grit your teeth, pretend it's a smile, and keep going. Now, the key to that is knowing that you're doing what God called you to do. Number four, maximum success. Living this dream will only occur if you throw off all the weights and the sin that are trying to hold you back and hold you down. We were driving out of our neighborhood some years ago, and they were blowing up a hot air balloon in the driveway as we were leaving, leaving our neighborhood. And I'm like, duh. Hot air balloon. It don't, it don't have a steering wheel. But it won't go anywhere unless you, don't, unless, you, unless you throw off all the weights that hold you down. So, Maximum success will only occur if you throw off the weights. And one of the weights is not a physical thing. It's not even really, in a sense, a mental thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's called strife, contention. We're living in a world, and I think social media and 24-hour news cycle has contributed to this. It's out of control. But everybody has an opinion. And oh, my gosh, if you say something on, on social media that, that somebody don't like, boom shakalaka, man, they on you. They just burn you up. Everybody's got an opinion. Nobody minds sharing it because we don't even make eye contact anymore. Are you, willing to, are you willing to release the strife in order to improve your life and to reach God's plan and purpose for your life? I say yes. We cannot see clearly when our perspective is blurred by strife and unforgiveness. I thank God I can't remember stuff that people do to me. I thank God I don't have the ability any longer to file in my, my short-term memory, certainly, what people do. Now, if I sit and talk to you for a while, oh, I can bring it up. You know, if I stand here long enough and put my finger down my throat far enough, I can bring up dinner, too. <laughs> same things, same thing. <laughs> strife, and, strife and unforgiveness is like vomit. God says, you know what, if you're lukewarm, I'll just vomit you out of my mouth. That's a scriptural thing. Success happens when you hold on to the plan long after everybody else has let go. I've got great friends in ministry. Paul Trochel, John George, Friends that are not quite as close, but I consider friends of mine, Tommy Birchfield, who was with John Osteen, Steve Buns, who was up in Indiana in a mega church. He's now in Louisiana. Spencer Nordyke, who was with Bob Tilton, went to the same Bible school I did some years later. He's with uh, Kenneth Copeland in his Bible school, teaching and leading his Bible school. Willie George. 
I've been in ministry 40, umpteen years, and I've just come up with six. Got to, there's got to be more. Now, let me tell you who all's failed. Let me tell you who all's quit. Let me tell you who all's given up. Boom, 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 Spend an hour. Who's been, who's, who's given up, been knocked down, beat up, fallen, left? Way too many. Success happens. Fulfilling the plan of God means you hang on and you refuse to let go. Ain't nobody going to make me quit. If God be for me, who can be against me? Losers. That's it. Just losers. Now, I don't mean losers in a negative sense. I just mean people that are so focused on me winning, they can't hardly uh, find the time and energy to do anything themselves except criticize what they think they see. All right, I'm preaching to myself. That's therapeutic. Thank you. Number six. How many nuggets we got? We're nearly there. Success occurs when you learn to fight for the things that are the most important. I got a book. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's a principle in life. You got to know when to choose your fights. Sometimes you just have to know when to fight and when it's not going to be a benefit to fight. Sometimes you just got to recognize, you know what, I can't help this person. I'm not going to fight with them. Thank you for your encouragement. I have lots of scriptures. You want to know any of them? Okay, Genesis, thank you. Abraham heard that his brother, Lot, his nephew technically, was taken captive. So he armed his trained servants. Everybody say trained servants that were born in his house, 318 of them. So here's the question, are you training those born in your house for spiritual war? Are you training them for spiritual war? Because the devil's coming. The enemy, like a roaring lion, seeks him and made of hour. He is on the hunt nonstop. He never, he, never, he never quits. Even if he's not attacking, he's just strategizing for another attack. You must have the courage to make God's ways and purposes top priority. You've got to know what is the most important thing to fight for. Don't fight over all the little stuff. Fight over the big stuff. At least get them in priority. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Destiny to Win TV, and I want to say thank you for watching our program. You know, we'd love to connect with you, and one way you can do that is join us right here at Family Church Bryant on Sunday morning or on Wednesday night. As you well know, we teach straight from the Word of God with a touch of humor to make the medicine go down. You know, we believe here at Family Church, a church alive is worth the drive. And if you're not connected with a local church, then why don't you visit us? Information right here on the screen. Until then, I'll see you right here at Destined to Win TV. God bless.